fucking child's pose. Knees out wide, fingertips up to the top of your mat. Start by getting settled here. Take a sigh if you need one. Anything that helps you get ready to put your whole attention on this practice for the next 60 minutes. One more time, breathe in. Blow all the air back out. On your next inhale, come to downward facing dog. Now this down dog is where I check out what's going on. So bend your right knee, bend your left knee. I love to come up high on my tippy toes here. It always cracks my ankles. Drop your heels back down. Nice job. One more time. Take a breath in. Blow the air out. Walk your feet all the way up to your hands. Halfway lift. Long, super straight spine. Ragdoll. Let your head drop. You might want to sway from the right to the left. Yeah, Steph's got lots of good ideas here in this pose. <laughs> yeah, ragdoll, it is the best. See if you can bring your hips one inch forward so they're really stacking right on top of your ankles. Yeah, I like that, Julie. Good job. Feel some more weight in your big toe. Press down through it. Hug your belly up and in. Roll to standing. You guys knew where I was going. Inhale, hands in the air. Exhale, drop your hands down to heart center. So we'll start the class with three ohms, just like usual. Now, ohming is not about what you sound like. It's about making some form of noise. So here we go. Inhale. Uh... Then reach up, fold, exhale. Halfway lift on your inhale, chaturanga, blow all the air out. Come to upward facing dog in, downward facing dog out. Take three breaths here. Set your intention for the practice now. What do you want to get out of this? In and out. One more time, breathe in. Exhale, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold. Extended mountain as you breathe in, fold air out. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Up dog, inhale. Down dog on your exhale. Three breaths. Focus on moving with your breath. Even here in down dog, Maybe picking your heels up on an inhale, dropping them down on the exhale. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, high on your tippy toes. Exhale, bend your knees, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold. Extended mountain, lift all 10 toes, fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, inhale, down dog on your exhale. Three breaths. Set your drishti here. It's your gaze. Choose one point that you want to look at throughout the duration of the pose. One more time. Inhale. Bend your knees on the exhale, eyes forwards, feet to hands. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Extended mountain. Inhale. Fold on your exhale. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Up dog. Into downward facing dog. Three breaths. Set your gaze. We're going to do one more sun A. Here it is. Inhale. Exhale. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Forward fold. 
extended mountain drishti fold halfway lift pick a point to look at chaturanga keep your eyes there up dog eyes to the ceiling down dog eyes to the mat two breaths now blow it out one more time in and out feet to hands halfway lift fold chair pose drishti one point fold halfway lift chaturanga upward facing dog drishti down dog right side warrior one eyes to the ceiling hands to the mat flow through up dog breathe in blow the air out down dog left side warrior one yeah that's it plant your foot then inhale exhale hands to the mat upward facing dog and into downward facing dog good stuff take a sigh yeah, julie has the right idea here inhale blow the air out let's do it one more time in and out feet to hands halfway lift fold chair pose drishti fold halfway lift chaturanga up dog down dog right side warrior one think about your intention here chaturanga flow to the opposite side upward facing dog into downward facing dog left side warrior one eyes and hands go up eyes and hands go down upward facing dog downward facing dog two breaths here do whatever you need to this is it last one in out move halfway lift forward fold chair pose intention here fold halfway lift chaturanga upward facing dog downward facing dog right side warrior one inhale exhale chaturanga upward facing dog downward facing dog left side warrior one flow in and right back out starting to feel the tapas through up dog and down dog take three big breaths here so as you're working in this practice work with that intention it's what you want to get out of the practice but if you've never worked with an intention before i'm going to provide one for you right here it's this thing that we believe in we call it whole perfect and complete your attention is going to come in an i am statement i am whole i am perfect i am complete are you ready inhale up on those tippy toes exhale bend your knees hop halfway lift whole fold chair pose perfect fold halfway lift chaturanga complete right here upward facing dog inhale down dog on your exhale right side warrior one breathe in as you reach up breathe out chaturanga upward facing dog whole downward facing dog left side warrior one perfect on the way up i am perfect chaturanga hands back down to the mat upward facing dog downward facing dog i am complete there's nothing broken about you nothing that needs to be fixed you are whole perfect and complete as you are right now let's bring your right leg up into the air yeah i know i was going to move through one more sun b but that felt a little mean so bend your top knee open up your hip go for flip dog now just like you're a drishti 
Drishti means gaze, but it can also mean attention and focus. Not only do you set your eyes to one spot, but you're also setting your intention for this practice to one place. I am whole, perfect, and complete. Come back over, high plank, into side plank. Right hand down, left hand up. Whole, perfect, and complete is something that you live up and into. It is a creation in your body, not a concept. One more time, breathe in, hands to the mat, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, inhale, down dog on your exhale. Yeah, that's a good idea, sigh. <sighs> Left leg, let's go, nice job. Bend your top knee, open your hip. That's it, really press through your left fingertips this time, lift through the leg, come over, dog. Now set the intention of your practice up right here. What does it feel like to be whole, perfect, and complete in your body? Your arm shaking, your legs shaking, sweat, all of that is whole, perfect, and complete as it's supposed to be. Come back over, high plank, side plank. Nice job, drishti up over your top fingertips. Now reach your top hand up towards the ceiling as high as you can go. Yeah, that's it, Shannon, bring that top foot up. One more inch, chaturanga, blow the air out. Upward facing dog, inhale, down dog on your exhale. Right side crescent lunge. This is one of my favorite little tricks in Crescent Lunge, and Kelly Stein taught it, taught it to me. Take your fingertips and interlace them. So what you're gonna do is bring your hands to the back of your neck, and let your head fall back into your hands. So what this causes is a slight bend in your upper chest and upper back. It also gives you the opportunity to support your head in the lunge, in the back bend. That's it, Nicole, see if you've got one more inch in this front knee. Yeah, you've got a girlfriend down here. One last breath. Hands to heart center. Twist to the right. Three breaths here. Let the pose build. It's tapas, heat building right here. Last one. You might have gotten a bonus breath. That's okay. On your inhale, rise up, crescent lunge. Into a warrior two. That's it, drishti over your front fingertips. This is the pose where I most often feel not whole, not perfect, and not complete. I'm definitely broken when I'm here. And it's because it's a physically challenging pose. It's hard to keep my drishti, my gaze present. And usually this pose just makes me feel rage. And that doesn't feel very whole, perfect, and complete to me, right? Like that doesn't seem very yoga, but it is. Come down to extended side angle. See, I promise even when I'm chit-chatting, I'm not gonna keep you there eternally. <laughs> it's the best. The release of extended side angle is the whole reason to do this pose. Here, reach this hand up and forwards. There, you're looking for a stretch that starts in this back foot and reaches the whole way to your pinky fingers. You got that? Check it out, one last breath and then hands down to the mat. Whew. Up dog and into down dog. Let's take a deep breath in, sigh. One more time, in and out, left side crescent lunge. And we're gonna come back up here with the fingertips interlace trick. It is so good. Lean your head back into your hands. Really see like, okay, how does this now feel? Usually I get an opening in my chest. Sometimes being and living into this idea is exploring all the spaces. If you're whole, perfect, and complete, you gotta know all the stuff about your body. It's a constant exploration. Last breath, I promise. Hands to heart center, and then we'll twist left three breaths here. And I promise if you breathe with loudly for me, I will count one, two, 
That's it. Last one in and stay for out. Breathe in, rise up. Crescent lunge. Warrior two. Choose to let it go. That piece that keeps nagging, you're like, oh, yeah, this is the not perfect, the not whole. This is the broken spot. What would it be like if you let that go? If you let yourself instead be perfect in that area? One more breath. And then extended side angle. Relief. Release. Now see, when you let it go, see the new space that you can create. This new stretch only happens when you heat up your whole body with the top bus, when you create that friction. Last breath here, and then hands down, chaturanga. Upward facing dog in, down dog out. Take your breath in and let it go. We'll do it one more time, in and out, feet to hands. Halfway lift. Fold. Chair pulse. Nicely done. Yeah, you can choose to bring your blocks with you. Steph likes to do that. I like to do that. Listen, I take the ideas from the people in the room, by the way. I do not come up with this on my own. It's the best, though. Okay, stay here. Two more breaths. And then we'll learn why the block trick is the best. Uh, best. Last one. Fold. Julie's looking at me like, oh, we got to get out of this pose. All right, Shannon, do you have a block with you? Yeah? A plus, good job. Bonus points. Okay. Let your head hang. Yeah, like really in this pose, yeah, you might need a drink of water. You might need your towel. Do that stuff and then get to the relief, like the release here. The practice is built so that you've got intense energy spends and then these places where you get to refill your cup. Make sure you're taking refilling the cup as importantly as the high energy spaces. All right, I'm coming with you guys with a block because I think it's unfair if not. So block right between your thighs. That's it. Now you want your feet just in a tiny bit so that you're creating tension, even if you're just standing. So just close enough that you're really hugging the block while standing. You're okay, don't worry. Now from here, sit back into your heels. So the trick with the block when you're here is just hugging in through your legs. It doesn't take that much before you feel your whole core, right? Bring your hands to heart center, twist to the right. All right, I promise to do this with you guys. I take it back. That seemed like a bad idea. Two more breaths here. Last one, in and down. Rise up, chair pose. Hands to heart center, twist left. Oh, I know. So keep the hug into your block. What it's doing here is keeping your knees parallel, keeping your hips parallel, and enabling you to therefore Twist deeper. One last breath. Inhale, rise up, chair pose. Fold. Blocks out. Feet wide. Tuck your palms underneath your big toes and let your head drop down. I got to grow up with yoga. And it's something that I'm really grateful for. If you don't know, uh, LT, Lisa uh, is the studio owner and founder, and I'm her kid, well, her oldest one. Uh, so I, Evolution opened when I was three or four years old. I've lived with this always. Lived with the principles, the methodology that we practice always. And this whole perfect and complete right here is the game changer. If you can live into that, You've got it. Like, that is the key to everything. Here. Try crow pose. And then we'll chat more in other poses. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you got it. Listen, it's the good stuff. I mean, yes, you got an awesome workout here. But there are really, like, 
there's more to be found in the practice too. Stay for five, four, three, two, one, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, inhale, down dog on your exhale. Take a breath in, let it go, feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold, right side eagle. Right arm under, right leg over. That's it, see if you can sit one inch lower. Drishti. Swap sides, left arm under, left leg over, eagle. Keep your gaze on one point, and then your attention, attention on your intention for this pose. Swap sides, right arm under, right leg over. Choosing happiness was like a huge, and still is a huge principle in my family. Like, how do you choose your happiness for yourself, even in the worst of scenarios? Right? And that's a pretty common concept, I think, to try to choose happiness for yourself. Left arm under, left leg over. And I really think that's what whole perfect and complete is as well. Your present circumstances only determine where you start, not where you end. You are whole, perfect, and complete as you are, but you can change if you want to. That's both sides, right? Step out. Good stuff. Right side, standing leg raise. Grab your knee or your toes. Bring your leg to the right, eyes to the left. That's it, flex your raised foot. Good job, Nicole. That's it, and when you fall out, just hop right back in. Legs are nice to center. Press back, airplane. Now flex your back foot, press through your heel. Press through the crown of your head, get as long as you can here on your mat. Keep the length, half moon. You gotta keep your back heel really active there. Press as hard as you can. Yeah, that's it. Spread your toes on your back foot. I swear it helps somehow. Look to your top hand, last one. Feet down. Hang in a forward fold. Oh yeah, let your head drop down. You can sway side to side, especially when you do all of those connected on one leg. The outer side of my hip just burns. Do you guys get that too? Yes? It's a lot of work. But it's good work. Of course. Are you guys ready for the next side? Yeah? All right, let's go. Left side, standing leg raise. Foot flexed. Bring your leg to the left. Eyes to the right. Stay for two breaths. Keep your gaze on that one point. Bring your eyes and legs back to center. Gaze changes. Airplane. Switching your drishti is often the hardest part of this whole practice. And Julie's got it. <laughs> She's staring a hole into the ground right now. Very focused. Half moon. That's it. Flex your back foot and spread your toes. Nice job. Spread your fingertips. Look to your top hand just for one breath. Hands down. Forward fold. Roll the whole way up to standing. And we'll take dancer. We're only going to do one set of these guys. So here you go. Right side dancer. Soft part of your elbow faces out. Mm -hmm. 
focus on length in this pose. Taking up as much space as humanly possible. From your back shin pressing out all the way to your front fingertips. Like reach to the edge of the box here. How big can you get? And then swap. I love equanimity because it teaches you so clearly where the edge is. You press, press out to it, press out, press out, and then, oops, you fell over. And that's okay. Hop back in. See if you can play with the edge. Getting as close as you can without falling over. Just holding the container of the pose. Last one. Feet down. Everybody's favorite tree pose. Maybe it's not everybody's favorite. Do you guys have a favorite of equanimity, the balancing poses? That's fair. Dancer. Oh my gosh. I have been wrong this whole time. Switch left side, tree pose. I can't hold dancer, by the way. I am like, fall, I fall out of it the whole time. Listen, sometimes, sometimes it'll stick and I'm in dancer and I'm like, oh yeah, we got it today. Other days, there's like barely even getting up there. All right, feet down. Come to the head of your mat. Inhale, extended mountain. Fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Chaturanga. Up dog, down dog. Right side triangle. Now, this can be the best of poses. Is it nice? It is. Focus on pressing your right hip crease back. Focus in this pose on the underside of your side body. Does that make sense? Your right side body. That makes more sense. Focus on creating length from your hip all the way up through to your armpit. I know, it's kind of odd to think about. You've got it just like that. <laughs> just create space as you're breathing. See if you can inflate the space between each rib, getting as long as you can through the crown of your head. Nice job, last one. And on your inhale, rise to stand. Take side facing, wide legged, forward fold. Bring some softness to your knees and point your big toes in towards your head. This is gonna change the stretch in the outer edges of your legs. Always something I have to remind myself of. Now you've been here for a breath or two. See if there's any more that you can fold, any more depth to get here. On your inhale, rise up to standing. Nice job, Shannon. And we'll take namaste front facing forward fold or split variations. You get to choose here. That's it. Ooh, Nicole, take your back foot out to the side a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. Because the width is really going to help with your balance here and keeping your hips level. Then fold forwards. I do it like this just because I have very... Like in this pose, I got a lot of stretch in my hamstrings and the added weight on my back does not help. <laughs> Bring some softness to your knees. That's it, actively thinking about pulling your right hip backwards. Take twisting triangle or twisting split. That's it, left hand down, right hand up. Nice job, Julie. Really think about pressing this hip backwards. Yeah, like that, that's a great adjustment. Keep pressing back here. I know it makes the twist harder, but it's good stuff. Last one, and chaturanga. Up dog, into down dog, left side triangle. Uh, 
That's it. See if you can place a little bit. See if you can bring a little bit of lightness to your hand on the block. I know it's a bit hard to picture sometimes, but really engage your feet and your legs here. Yes, your hand is the third piece of support in this pose, but really I like to picture it as more so if you were looking at a boat, it would be like a rope holding the sail together. This is a terrible metaphor. Instead of a mast, like a big, heavy, strong thing, those are your feet. Take another breath. On your inhale, rise up. Take side facing, wide legged forward fold. Now you can choose to do ninja lunges here where you're bending one knee and straightening out the other. If you're dying to get upside down, you can do that too. All of the options exist here. There's so many fun different ways to take on this pose. Yeah, binds too. Find what's gonna work for your body today and then make that happen. That's really all an intention is. It's a goal that you set. And then you be for that thing. Like you're a yes for it. Creating it as a reality in your body and space and time. And your next breath in, rise up. And take namaste, front facing, forward fold. Check it out, feet wide, both facing forwards. As you fold, think about pulling your a right hip backwards, left hip backwards, there we go, and then fold forwards. It's always the hip attached to the front leg that you have to think about pulling back. Once you know that, then no matter if your teacher knows their rights or left, you'll always know where to go. Yeah, especially when you guys are facing different directions. That is a trick with this specific studio setup. I can no longer tell which leg we're on ever. Keep thinking about pulling that hip backwards and take twisting triangle. That's it, right hand down, left hand up. Oh yeah, you got it, there you go. Each exhale, see if you can twist it out one more time and bring your hands down, chaturanga. Up dog, into down dog. Roll to your high plank and lower the whole way down onto your mat. Locust pose. Hands out wide, here you go. Locust for five, four, three, two, one, come the whole way down. Floor bow. I know, we're gonna move with double blocks soon. Shannon, don't worry, you can do what we're going to do without two blocks. But if you have like a thick book or something beside you, that also works. Three, two, one, back down. Nice job, take upward facing dog. That's it. Shoulders back and together. Stretch from your pelvis all the way up to your crown of your head and knees down. So we're going to do what I call reverse camel today because I don't know the real name for it, but it's a favorite. Oh, I was going to say of one of my students, but she's now an instructor. So here's what you're going to do. Stack these blocks right on top of each other. You want them as wide as they can go. You want extra space here. Sometimes if I'm at home and I have like tons of objects around me, I'll even put more things out. But plant one elbow on the block. Then what you'll do is drop your head down below this elbow and pick your opposite elbow up. Thank you. And you can choose to do this instead of camel at any time. Yeah, there you go. Look, take it a little bit wider. It's way easier when you've got four of these guys instead of two. Okay, so one elbow, then drop it. I know your bun's a little bit in the way. There you go. So you get this huge opening in your upper back. With 
with each exhale. Let your chest hang heavy. Focus on pressing your thoracic spine. Hey, Shannon, I can help you out if you've got questions. There you go, girl. So one elbow, then head down, and then stack that other elbow. There you go. You can even bring your hands to like prayer hands and then press your thumbs against your back. That always feels good to me. If you're like, all right, this is feeling good, but I could get some more out of it, you can always scoot your knees backwards a little bit further. When you bring them back, it's going to give you slightly more height in your hips, which allows your chest to drop down further. But honestly, the first time I ever did this, I was like, okay, exactly where I'm at right now is the maximum I can go to. Stay for just one more breath. And then take one elbow off. That's it. Then, then come up. How does that feel? Yeah. Just sit for a second in high hero. So you're sitting back down onto your ankles. Get your head right on top of your shoulders, on top of your hips. And just feel the new space that you've created in your body. You can even do some shoulder rolls here. Forwards and backwards. Yeah, that's a good idea. Drop your head down and around. After a big stretch, I always think that you should be able to take a second to look at what's changed. Let's roll onto your spine and we'll do bridge pose. So today I'm not gonna ask us to go up into wheel just because that's a big back opening in an opposite direction. So we're gonna keep that opening instead of the wheel opening. Bridge here is A-OK. -okay. So press your heels down, hips up, bridge pose round one. Nice job. Look to keep a straight line from your knees all the way to your shoulders. I'm somebody who likes to really try to press my shoulders down and under me and get way too high up in this pose. Don't go for maximum height, go for maximum length. Organize your feet so that they're both facing 12 o'clock. And come back down to the mat. You can tick tock your knees side to side. Let's go bridge pose round two. Press both heels down, hips up. Now from here, this is a trick that Lisa taught me. Steph, how are you already there? Keep your feet in the same spot. Don't move them. It is very hard to do this. Now bring your right knee into your chest. I know you're gonna wanna move your left foot. Now press your heel straight up to the ceiling. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Knee in and down. Then we'll switch the left side. Yeah, get your feet wide. And then knee in, heel up. Five, four, three, two, one. Drop back down, hips down, knees side to side. One last time, we'll do bridge, all right? Here we go, press down, lift up, last one. Go for length here. Bring your right knee up, heel to the ceiling. Now do some pulses where you're bringing your hips down to the mat, then back up for five, four, three, two, one. All right, swap sides. Last one, knee into your chest, heel up to the ceiling, pulse for five, four, three, two, one. One, feet down, Supta Baddha Konasana. One hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. Knees out wide. Take happy baby. Bring both feet straight up into the air and bring a foam block with you. Oh, yeah, Whoop. yeah, yeah. 
swap that out. So put the foam block the long direction between your shins. So this direction. Here, swap it the other way. This way, actually. I know, it's really hard to get this the right direction. So this direction. Get Nicole one more time. Here, swap it. Oop, wait. This way. Yeah, you got it. Okay, good stuff. Now, reach your fingertips up towards your toes. What you're going to do on your exhale, lower your hands and lower your feet. Only like halfway down. Then inhale, come back up. Swap your block into your hands. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, back up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up. Exhale, lower. Four, up. Three, up. Two, up. One, last one, lower it down. Bring your feet back up. All right, hug your knees into your chest and rock head to toe three times. All the way backwards and all the way forwards. On this third one, Let's bring our blocks with us and we'll do boat pose. So block the long direction, same spot we just had it at. Boat pose. Now you might just be picking it up to here. And you can always choose to use your fingertips as little tents here. I actually really like to do that. On your exhale, lower your knees down, your heels down. Inhale up. Exhale lower. Inhale up. Exhale lower. Inhale up, exhale lower. Last one, inhale up, exhale drop the block. <laughs> Let's move to right side half pigeon. However you wanna get there. Whether you do half pigeon on your back or prone with your belly facing the mat. Yes, and I know you've got plenty of props and tools around you at this point. So if you need a block for underneath your forehead, if you need a block for underneath your hip, go ahead and use that. Also, I get a lot of students who start with using a block underneath of, it would be your right hip in this practice. But suddenly, you know, after a few practices, they have some more space and the block is too much, too high. Instead of using a full size block, there are some half blocks that we have that are a little bit thinner. But you can always bring a towel, a sweatshirt, and roll that up and stick it under your hip. Take a deep breath in, followed by a full exhale. On your next breath, move through downward facing dog and into the opposite side, half pigeon. If your intention is for this practice, I am whole, I am perfect, I am complete, 
What do you need to give up here to live into that intention? Think about what you want to have happen, that intention, whole, perfect, complete. That's what you want. Now look at what's actually happening. Oh, my hip feels tight today. I'm not very flexible. I'm not good at this. What would happen if you put that to the side? If instead of my hip is bad for being tight, what if it just was? Take one more breath in and out. Come through to downward facing dog. Check out new space, check out new feelings. Make your way through to a seated position. Take right side seated single leg extension, right leg out. Inhale, fingertips up. On your exhale, fold down towards your foot. On your next breath, swap sides. Left leg out. Inhale, fingertips up. Exhale, fold towards your toes. By the way, in this pose, you guys are all pretty flexible here. I like to keep my left hand on my toes, and then I use my right hand out to the side to help support folding towards my toes instead of really folding towards the middle. So if you're just using that hand to push over a little bit as you fold, I find that usually my right side is like, oh, we're involved in this pose? I didn't know that. <laughs> Inhale, rise up. And we'll take tabletop. Fingertips face towards your heels. Press down, lift up, let your head drop back. You can rock forwards and backwards here too. Bye, Steph. It was good to see you. On your exhale, come down to a seated position. Let's take uh, shoulder stand, waterfall, all the options here. Essentially, block underneath your hips for waterfall, feet up into the air. Anything where you're getting your hips above your heart. One more time. I teach the 6 a.m. and noon classes. But I want to tell you guys, if you ever need to jump out early from one of those, because you've got work, your day to do, different stuff, that's totally fine. We up here take no offense. Bring your feet down to the floor. Remove your blocks. Hug your knees up into your chest. Knees drop to the left side of your body. Knees left, eyes over your right shoulder.
Drop your knees over to the right side now, eyes to the left. There's a cool eye towel if you're in the studio by the upper right hand corner of your mat. You're welcome to use it at any time. your knees into your chest, Shavasana. Let your legs and arms go long, eyes closed. What would it look like if you let yourself be whole, perfect, and complete just for today? What would it look like if you let the other people in your life, from the grocery bagger, to your friends, to your family, to your coworkers, what if you let them be whole, perfect, and complete? Not broken, not needing fixed, what would it look like if you let them have that space, have that grace?
take a deep breath in. Exhale it back out. Hug your knees into your chest. Rock onto the right side of your body, forehead on the floor. Rise up to a seated position. Inhale, fingertips up. Exhale, hands down to heart center. So we'll seal in class today, sealing your intentions with one arm. Take a breath in. Uh, Thumb knuckles up to forehead center. Together we bow our heads and we say, Namaste. It was good to see you guys. Thank you for coming in for class.